やりますやりますHello, Ohio gozaimasu, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Higashi Honganji uh, Mission of Hawaii and Hawaii District Honko Service. Thank you so much for joining us remotely. Uh, thank you, and uh, we hope that uh, we all have a good time today. Uh, so we're going to begin with our Honko chanting. Uh, we have the 
Uh, we have the schedule up in the Facebook window, translated into English, so you can see what we will be doing. Uh, and we'll also have some bits that are translated as well. So uh, thank you once again, and thank you for watching.
place its gratitude in the forehead on the sun. How great is my gratitude for the great compassion of all Madhavita that embraces me spontaneously even to the point when my body comes to the dust. How great is my appreciation for the wonderful blessings of my dark teacher that guide me spontaneously even to the point when my mortal leg is chattered. Therefore, at the point of time, we express our gratitude and listen to the Shinnashori teaching and treat it done for his interest again and we, we confirm our commitment to listen ever more gently to the teaching of Shinan Shoni Nimitsu. Respectfully in the show, November 8, 2020, Shaku came to Yama Te Mosu.
Oh, yeah.
We will now show a video sent to us by our Honzan, our headquarters temple in Japan, with a message for this year's Honko from our previous abbot, our incoming abbot, and our new overseas district abbot. These will be presented in English and in Japanese. I wish to thank all of you, the members of our Sangha, about your words, for entrusting me with such an important role. This year, all of us have found ourselves in uncharted territory due to the novel coronavirus pandemic. In the midst of this uncertainty, all overseas Sangha members have made effort to conduct the Honko service at your temple. I express my deepest appreciation for all of you to serve this most important event. The teaching of Jodo Shinshu, clarified by Shingan Shon, has always reminded us of the theft of the equality of all people regardless of nationality, gender, age, and so forth. All living beings are equal. No one can be saved alone. No one can be saved unless all others are saved. This is the spirit of the teaching we are encouraged to awaken so that we can truly live together in harmony. If we continue to do our best to share this teaching with people, especially with children, I believe it will eventually help to bring about the realization of a society where people can live together with mutual respect. Since I grew up 
in Buddhist temple in a rural city called Asai in Brazil, I have realized the importance of sharing the teaching through my own experience at Dharma school as well as through my interaction with our members of the Nambei Honganji Brazil Betsuni. It's my understanding that the purpose of the Dobokai movement, which has been central to the Shinshu Otaniha educational activity, is to spread the teaching of equality to everyone throughout the world. As the newly installed Apple, I have taken this opportunity to renew my commitment to spreading the teaching of Namami Dabu beyond the boundaries of language and good. It was very unfortunate that we had to cancel the 13th World Jogo Gathering in Kyoto scheduled for April this year because of the COVID-19. I greatly miss all of you in our overseas district. I can never forget the tremendous support you extended to me during my tenure as overseas district head. As we are ushered into the era of the new normal, where we will have to coexist with the novel coronavirus, it is crucial for mm -hmm. us to be open to yeah. incorporating new technologies in our propagation activities whenever mm -hmm. necessary. At the same time, I am sincerely looking forward to welcoming all of you here at the Shinshu Hongyo. Uh, so the you can see the video on the link that I sent you uh, on Facebook. Uh, that's where the... We have a message from our abbots that is playing on Facebook. It's on the link that I sent to you folks. So, uh, sir, uh, so please make sure to keep your microphones muted. If you have questions for Sensei, uh, please make sure to type it in the chat. さまざまな復讐をしながら法音法を務めいただいていることに感謝いたします。診断証人が開かれた共同親衆は国や人種、性別、年齢などに関わりなく差別の前平等の世界を超えている教えです。生きとし生けるもの平等で私一人では助からない。みんなが助からないと私も救われないという。主情とともに生きる世界を丁寧に伝える。そして子供たちにそれを大事に伝えていけば将来願い開いて世界に尊ぶ社会になっていくのではないか
ウィズコロナの時代になっていく中で新しいテクノロジーにも柔軟に対応していく心構えを大切にしつつ社会が落ち着きを取り戻した折にはここ新州本領で皆様とお会いできる日を楽しみにしています。Thank you very much for your attendance at the Owanto service today. My name is Yu Otani. I have assumed the position of Overseas District Abbot as of July 1st of this year. The plan for me was to visit you in your district to join the service today. However, because of the novel coronavirus pandemic, all travels to the Overseas District this year had to be cancelled. I truly miss the opportunity to see you all again. In this critical time, it has become even more important for me to contemplate what kind of contributions I can make as overseas district head. On the occasion of the COVID 19 pandemic, all of us around the world have been forced to adopt new ways of living in order to coexist with the virus. Such drastic changes have been the source of deep anxieties for many of us. In such times, it is only natural to feel like we are losing our foothold in our lives. Even though a growing number of people identify themselves as non religious in today's world, the problems and anxieties we fundamentally have as human beings have not changed at all. What that means is that those existential questions still require some form of religious response. From now on, I think we need to utilize new technologies such as online video conferencing, not only for exchanging information, but also for giving support to people who are suffering through such things as rituals, personal consultations, and other types of support we can offer. I look forward to deepening my relationship with our fellow followers of the Sisters of the Sisters. Active dialogue and devote myself to the communication efforts in the future while at the same time reflecting deeply upon myself. In addition to my new role as overseas district abbot, I have also assumed the role as successor to the abbot, Shimon, on the occasion of my father's appointment as a father. I am overwhelmed with anxiety regarding my new responsibilities since I lack experience and I know that I have a lot to learn. But I am determined to carry out my responsibilities by dedicating myself to continue to listen to and learn from the teachings. I will direct my wholehearted efforts to assist the abbot in sharing the teaching of the Shinran Chodi, which can provide a true spiritual foothold for people. Throughout the world, thereby contributing to the realization of a true global society. To all of you, I ask for your continued support. Thank you very much.新州大谷派の開教司教に就任した大谷優と申します世界的な新型コロナウイルス感染症の拡大により開教司教として予定しておりました各開教区高温校への出向は本年は見合わせる形とさせていただきました大変残念に思っておりますこのような中で開教司教として今後どのような役割が果たせるのかよく考えていかなければならないと感じておりますこの度のコロナ禍はそれぞれの国を超えて世界中で新しい習慣あり方を取り入れていかなければならないことになりましたそれら多くの変化に対する不安が起こるところどこに心の拠りどころを置くのかという悩みが出てくるのでしょう
宗教離れと言われる状況の中にあっても人間の根本的な不安や悩みは変わっておらずそして救いを求める気持ちも変わっていないと思いますこれからはオンラインなど新しい技術を使って情報交換だけではなく苦しんでいる方々を支えるため意識であれ相談であれさまざまな形で取り組まなければならないと思います愛教区の皆様方との対話と交流を深め自分を改めて見つめ直しながらこれからの強化に尽力していきたいと思っていますまた私はこの度父の本州就任により新門として新たな道を歩ませていただくこととなりました学びも経験も浅い私には不安ばかりですがこれからも一重に門法精進の歩みを進めていくことが新門としての務めを果たしていくことになると考えていますこれからは門主を補佐し人間が生きていく支えとなる浄土真宗親鸞超人の教えを世界に広げ統合社会の実現に尽くしていきたいと思っています皆様どうぞよろしくお願いします
uh, we've been uh, living in a very uh, unpredictable and uh, chaotic uh, time. I'm standing now in the classroom of the Maida Center in Berkeley. I feel strange to give a talk without any live audience here. Uh, anyway, I miss, I, I miss you people in Hawaii. I miss seeing uh, uh, Bishop Kawawata and Reverend uh, Steve. Uh, I also, I miss a uh, uh, wonderful kupu we have there. I miss uh, Hoki, also I miss uh, Saimin, and uh, well, well, peanuts. I, I miss so many things uh, there. O although I'm uh, physically here in Berkeley, my heart is with you people in Hawaii now. Uh, last February, I spoke at your temple and I was invited to speak at your Dobo seminar. I had a very wonderful time at that time. And after I spoke at your temple, uh, I canceled all my speaking and engagements because of coronavirus. Uh, so <laughs> I've been staying here most of the time. And the recent years, my wife and I have been going to Japan uh, every year. Uh, we usually spend uh, uh, a couple of months, September and October, uh, in Japan. I, uh, I usually speak at various places in Japan. But uh, this year, because of the virus, uh, we could not go there. Uh, it's actually very nice to go to there. I make many, <coughs> many new Dharma friends uh, every time I go there. But going to Japan is a kind of occupational hazard, occupational hazard for me, because uh, I tend to overeat. I tend to overeat there. Uh, they treat, treat us all kinds of delicious food, and uh, uh, I cannot uh, resist in, uh, eating uh, all kinds of foods that I'm not supposed to eat. My doctor has been telling me, don't eat sweet and fatty food. Uh, but I cannot resist them in Japan because you know, Japan has such wonderful food like uh, Kobe beef, tempura, sashimi, and I, I love the Japanese cream puff. I believe that Japanese cream, cream puff is the best and uh, that doesn't help me, you know, have a good health. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, because of virus, I've been staying ho home most of the time. And uh, uh, so I've been living a very healthy life. I have not gained any weight uh, this time of the year. Uh, uh, since I have a lot of time in staying home, I spent a lot of time in growing vegetables. Now, I, I really enjoy uh, growing all kinds of vegetables uh, uh, here. And I really enjoy eating fresh vegetables. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, this morning we are observing the Honko service. The Honko is a memorial service, memorial service of Shindan Shonin. Of course, Shindan Shonin is the founder of our Buddhist uh, tradition. In the Jodo Shinshu calendar, the Honko service is the most important event of the year. So on this day, we express our gratitude to Shindan Shonin for his wonderful teachings. In observing uh, uh, the memorial service of Shindan Shonin, 
I want to talk about the concepts of self-power and the other power. The self-power and the other power are the two of the most important concepts in Shindan Shonin's uh, teaching. Then what is the other power? <coughs> the other power does not mean the power of a divine savior who saves us. You know, in Buddhism, we don't talk about any divine savior who saves us. Uh, so we don't talk about the power of the savior. And the other power does not mean the mysterious power that saves us or does not mean the supernatural power that saves us. The other power actually refers to the Dharma, Dharma. Dharma means the truth. So the other power refers to the truth that Buddhism teaches. The other power refers to the truth of conditional arising, conditional arising. I believe this uh, truth, Dharma, or truth of conditional arising is the most important truth that Buddhism teaches us. That this truth of conditional arising is sometimes called the truth of interdependency, interdependence. Then what is, what is the truth of condi conditional arising? It means, it means that everything exists because of causes and conditions. It means that nothing exists by itself. Everything exists uh, as an assembly or assemblage of causes and conditions. Uh, let me explain uh, uh, this truth of conditional arising in a more con concrete way. I, I exist here now, okay? I, I exist here because of the, the, the other power, because of the truth of conditional arising. I exist here because of causes and conditions. I cannot, I cannot exist without causes and conditions. I exist because of the things and the people. So there are so many things and people outside me. And I exist here because they exist there. They are forming me. They are part of me. For example, uh, I have this body. Okay? When I say I, I means my body and mind. So uh, this body, my body is an assembly, assembly of things that I have eaten, I, I've eaten. My body exists because of the various foods that I have consumed. The, uh, I eat a lot of rice, I eat a lot of meat, uh, fish, vegetables. The, those things that exist outside myself, the, all kinds of underwater and the air. Those things that exist outside me are forming me. Without them, this body doesn't exist. This body is assemblage, assembly of the uh, things uh, that exist outside me. Similarly, my mind. <laughs> what is my mind? My mind is an assembly of all kinds of ideas, knowledge, and information that I have received from people who exist outside myself. See, they are, uh, since I was a kid, uh, I received all kinds of ideas, knowledge, and information from uh, my parents, my, my uh, brother, and my, my uh, uh, friends. And I received all kinds of uh, uh, information, knowledge from the books I read. So the, so the, my mind is nothing but the assembly of the, all the ideas and knowledge and information I received from outside. 
the Ifari, uh, if I haven't received uh, anything from the outside, my mind doesn't exist. See? So the, uh, the truth of uh, conditional arising means that I cannot exist. My body and mind cannot exist without uh, uh, causes of condition, without things and people that exist outside me. So this fact, this fact that I, I don't have any uh, unchanging substance in me, the fact that uh, uh, I don't have any independent substance in me, this fact is called the truth of conditional arising. And this fact is called the other power. So it is because of the, the other power, because of the uh, conditional arising, because of causes and uh, causes and conditions. It is because of things and people that I can exist, that I, my body and mind can exist. So the other power is a term term that uh, explains the manner how I am existing, explain the manner, the true manner, how I am existing. Now I have explained the meaning of the other power. Then what is self-power? <laughs> self-power is the antonym of other power. What is self-power? Self-power means the ignorance, ignorance, of the other power. Self-power means the ignorance of the truth of conditional arising. It means the ignorance of the fact that we are existing because of causes and conditions. It's ignorance of the fact that we are uh, existing because of things and uh, people that are forming us. So self-power means the wrong idea. Wrong idea, self-power means wrong idea that we can exist all by ourselves. It means overestimation, overestimation of our own abilities. So the person of self-power does not know, does not know the fact that he exists because of causes and conditions, but the person of the other power knows, knows it. And the person of self power has a wrong view of himself. Uh, he has an infatuated view of himself. But the person of the other power has a right view, correct view of himself. Buddhism teaches teaches us that we human beings are initially self-power oriented. The Buddhism tell us that all of us initially self-centered, you know, self-power oriented. And uh, we, we, that, so we think as if we could uh, exist all by ourselves. But Buddhism teaches us that we must recognize this mistake and we must become a person of the other power who can understand the true manner how we are existing. To show the differences, to show the difference between the person of the self-power and the person of other power, let me talk about two types, two types of students here. Uh, the two types of students, I call them Mr. A and Mr. B. They both have just received the same PhD degree in science. But the ways, the ways they think about their achievements are totally different. Mr. A, Mr. A thinks this way. I received the PhD degree because I worked hard. I did, you know, I did everything. I, I did it. So I can take all the credit for this achievement. Mr. A thinks that way, but Mr. B is different. Mr. B thinks 
I received the PhD degree because many things and people have helped me. I was fortunate to attend a wonderful school. I was fortunate to have many wonderful books and materials, fortunate to have many wonderful teachers, many people, many people such as my parents and my friends encouraged me, encouraged me in this process of gaining degree. I owe, I owe all my achievement to all of them, all the things and the people I encountered. Mr. A thinks, Mr. A thinks that he can take all the credit for his achievement, but Mr. B thinks that he owes so much to many things and people. We can call Mr. A a man of self power, and we can call Mr. B a man of the other power. Mr. A is overestimating his own abilities. He is ignorant of the fact that he is supported by many things and people. But Mr. A knows, he knows that he is supported by many things and people. All of us, unfortunately, all of us are uh, initially like Mr. A. We initially think uh, that you know, we can take all the credit for our achievement. But Buddhism teaches us, teaches us, Buddhism teaches us that we must recognize a mistake and we must become Mr. B's who has uh, the right view, the right view of this world, the right view of himself. Now let me discuss the same issue, same issue in a more specific context, in a more experiential context. I want to talk about uh, our hands, our hands, our hands as a symbol of self-power. I want to talk about our hands as a symbol of self-power. We usually think, we usually think that our hands can do everything. We usually see only our hands, see our, only our hands, and we don't see the hands of other people that are supporting us. If we think, if we think we can do everything, all kinds of things with our hands alone, such a life is called the life that is based upon the self-power. But the reality is such that we cannot uh, live our lives all by ourselves. We are actually being supported by the invisible, invisible hands of many, many other people. If we can see the invisible hands that are supporting us, we can see the invisible hands that are supporting us. Such a life is called the life that is based upon the other power. Simply because we have too much confidence in our own hands, uh, we cannot see the, 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 the we cannot uh, appreciate, we cannot appreciate the hands of other people simply because we have too much of our hands, too much of a hand, too much of self-power. We cannot see the invisible hands that are supporting us. It is when, it is when we lose the, uh, the, the function of our hands, we can discover the hands, hands of other people that are supporting us. It is when we can see the, the emptiness of our hands that we can appreciate the hands of other people. Now, I want to give a couple of stories here. I want to give you a couple of stories here. With these two stories, I want to explain that it is when 
we see the emptiness of our own hands, our emptiness of our self-power, that we can appreciate the hands of other people. We can appreciate the other power. First, let me talk about one experience I had about 35 years ago. 35 years, about 35 years ago, my wife and I uh, uh, moved from Chicago to Berkeley, California. One month, one month before we moved to Berkeley, I broke my two elbows. I broke two my elbows uh, on the street in Chicago, on the street of Chicago. You know, everything or anything could happen in the Chicago street. One evening, I was walking on the sidewalk and tripped over an iron bar. I fell down with my elbow protecting my hands. See, I, I landed, <laughs> I landed with my elbow protecting my head and head like this. Okay. It was so painful. It was so painful. And uh, and uh, I kind of, kind of I am bar was stretching from parking lot to the sidewalk and I I was tripped over this iron bar. Two, two of my feet are caught by me, so I fell down like this. And both of my elbows were broken. It was very, very, very painful experience. Then I was hospitalized for two weeks. I had operations on my both elbows. Uh, after the operations, I had two large casts on my el uh, on my arms. Say two large casts, both 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 uh, are on arms. See, I was lying on bed like this, and my friends visited me and told me I looked exactly like a lobster. But then <laughs> uh, that happened, and. Uh, uh, so for about a, a couple of weeks, couple of weeks, I could not use my hands at all, at all. So I could not do anything. I could not eat and, or drink by myself. I cannot bathe. I cannot uh, change my clothes. Other people, so other people, uh, nurses and my wife, uh, had to uh, feed me, uh, give me drink, and say, they must uh, uh, change my clothes. So they were constantly helping me. I was just like a baby, like they cannot do anything. Before that experience, I never thought, I never thought that I could lose the function of my arms and hands. When I lost the function of my hands, I realized that many people were actually supporting and helping me. I realized that what my hands, my visible hands can do was so limited. And I realized that so many invisible hands were there and helping me and doing a great job for me. I realized that before the accident, I had been overestimating the abilities of my hands. I was overestimating my self power. And I've been neglecting to appreciate other people's hands. I was neglecting to appreciate the other power. I recognize the fact that other people's hands had been there, had been there all the time, and that they had been always helping me, constantly helping me and supporting me. And they are making me to live. So this was a very uh, difficult experience, painful experience I had. I, it was a humbling experience. But it was also, also a wonderful experience. I, I say it was a wonderful experience because I gained a wonderful insight, insight into the reality of the other power. 
uh, it was a wonderful awakening experience. Uh, here, I want to talk about another story about a woman who lost her two arms, two arms. I want to talk about the life of Reverend uh, Junkyoni Oishi. Junkyoni, uh, Junkyoni was a Buddhist nun, Buddhist nun belonging to the Shingon school of Buddhism. Junkyoni was born in 1890 and died in 19, 1965. So she passed away about 50 years ago at the age of, uh, around the age of eight, uh, 70. Her childhood dream was to become a performer of the Japanese dance. So when she was 17, she started to live in the house of a dance teacher in Kyoto. Uh, she wanted to become a you know, dance teacher, so lived in the house of the uh, dance teacher. And she was given the name Tsumakichi. Tsumakichi, it, it was a name as a novice dancer. One night, one night, a tragedy happened. Uh, dance, the dance teacher's wife, the dan uh, dance teacher's wife ran away with her boyfriend. Being informed that his wife had run away with her boyfriend, the dance teacher became extremely upset. He became a madman, madman. He took out a sharp sword, a sharp samurai sword, and started to slash everybody he encountered. First, he attacked and killed his wife's mother. Then, he did the same to his wife's brother and sister. Then he attacked the three dance students who were in the house at that time. Sumakichi was one of those three dance students who were attacked by him. When the bloody cutting and slashing were over, police came and people found found five dead bodies that were totally mutilated. And in the pool of, in the pool of water, uh, not the pool of blood, they also found the slightly moving body of a girl whose two arms were cut off from her shoulders. When a doctor examined her, he said, that the girl would not live. But miraculously, miraculously, she did survive. This girl was Sumakichi. Having lost her arms, Sumakichi had to give up her desire to become a professional dancer. Her life after that, was not the easiest kind of life. She joined a circus. She joined the circus, showing her armless body, she earned her living. She was one of the main attractions of the circus because she was famous. She was known as the only survivor of the famous slaughtering incident in Kyoto. Many people paid lots of money to get to see her armless body. Having experienced many difficulties in her life, Sumakichi later appreciated the Buddha's teaching and became a Buddhist nun. Her name was changed to Junkyoni. Here, let me talk about one episode, one episode from her life as a Buddhist. One day, Junkyoni and her student visited the Buddhist temple in Kyoto. 
this temple had a Buddha statue, Buddha statue that had many arms stretching out of his shoulder. This Buddha is called the Buddha with 1,000 arms. And each arm held all kinds of things, such as food, medicine, tools, and weapons. When Junkyoni and her student came to this statue, they stopped in front of the statue, and Junkyoni asked a one question to her student. Junkyoni asked, do you know, do you know what kind of person came up with the idea of creating a Buddha statue like this? Do you know who came, who first came up with the idea of creating Buddha statue like this? The statue that has 1,000 hands? Then her student answered, Sensei, I, I, I have no idea. I don't know. Then Junkyoni said, Junkyoni said, I think the first person who came up with the idea of creating a Buddha statue like this must be, must be a person who did not have both arms. Because I don't have my both arms, because I don't have my both arms, I can know very well that so many people have been supporting and helping me with their hands and arms. So I can know that the Buddha has 1,000 hands. Buddha has 1,000 hands. Because I'm armless, handless, I can know that Buddha has 1,000 hands and he has been helping people with those hands. So, because I'm armless, handless, I, I can know that only a person with a, without arms can come up with the idea of creating with a statue like this. So, I, be, I say the first person who came up with the idea of creating with a statue like this must be a person who did not have both arms. Junkyoni said, Junkyoni said that if someone were to offer a set of uh, arms, set of uh, arms in an exchange for her Buddhist faith, she said she would not accept the offer. She said someone would but to offer a new set of arms in an exchange for her Buddhist faith, she, she said she would not accept the offer. She said the Buddhist insight she learned thanks to the fact that she did not have arms was a priceless treasure that she could not exchange for anything else. She said, it is simply because, simply because I was armless, I was able to receive, receive a wonderful treasure, a priceless uh, treasure. This morning, in observing the memorial service of Shinran Shonin, I've talked about the meaning of self-power, and the other power. These are the two of the most important concepts in Jodo Shinshu. I, I, I talked about the empty, emptiness of the self-power self and the greatness and the reality of the other power. Shinran Shonin teaches us, he teaches us that the most important truth in Buddhism is the truth of conditional arising. It is the truth that everything exists because of causes, conditions. This truth means that 
We all are existing because of the things and the people that exist outside us. We totally owe our existence to, to all of them. The other power refers to this fact, refers to this truth. It refers to the true manner we are existing. Self-power means ignorance. Self-power me means ignorance of this truth. It means the overestimation of our own abilities. It, is, it means a wrong idea that we can do all kinds of things by ourselves. It means a wrong idea that we can do everything all by ourselves. We must see the emptiness of, the, of our hands, and we must see the greatness of invisible hands, the other power that, that are supporting us. Simply because, simply because we have too much of our hands, too much of our self-power that we cannot see so many invisible hands that are supporting us. Junkyoni said, Junkyoni said, it is simply because I was armless, I was able to receive a wonderful treasure. I was able to receive a, a priceless treasure. She said the insight into the fact that so many people and things are, uh, are helping her and one making her live was such a wonderful treasure, that, that insight, that wisdom she received simply because she was armless, was such a wonderful treasure. All the Buddhist teachers, such as Shakyamuni, Shinran Shonin, and Renyo Shonin, teach us the same truth, same truth. They teach us that we must move from our self-power-centered way of living to other power-centered way of living. Thank you very much. え、皆様、あ、おはようございます。え、本日は、あ、ハワイ東本郷サービスにご招待を賜りまして、え、大変ありがたいことと思っております。え、え、本当は皆様とご一緒にですね、え、ホテルでこのコンサービスをお祝い
説明させていただいた,いただきたいと思います。えーえー、音読さんを読みますと、如来大秘の音読は身を苦にしても頬詰めし、知識知識の音読も骨を砕きてもシャスべし、如来大秘の音読は身を苦にしても頬詰めし、知識知識の音読も骨を砕きてもシャスべし。えーこれは診断証人がね、あの、言ってるわけですね。簡単に意味を言いますと、如来大秘っていうのはこの阿弥陀様のことですね。阿弥陀仏の音読で、ね、ご音は身を粉にしてもですね、体を粉にしても感謝をしなければいけない。そして、死守知識。この死守っていうのは、一番大切な先生っていうことです。これはお釈迦様のことですね。そして、知識というのは、で、診断証人の全知識のことですね。えー、それは、まあ、七構想という意味に考えてもいいですね。インド、中国、日本におられた七構想。最後は法然証人ですけれども。ですから、歴史上におられた釈尊。それから、インド、中国、日本に現れた七構想ですね。その人たちのご恩もですね、骨を砕いても、この、骨を砕いても、その、感謝しなければいけないというふうに言われているわけですね。それで最後のこのすべしという言葉は、これ非常に大事な言葉だと思いますけれども、これを初めてこう読みますとね、これは親鸞承人の言葉ですからね、親鸞承人が私たちに、お前感謝しなきゃいけないんだ、しなきゃいけないんだって、親鸞承人が私たちにこれを語りかけしなきゃいけないんだと、まあ命令しているように聞こえますけれども、そうに読んではいけ,いけないわけですね。このすべしというのは、診断承認が聞いてる言葉ですね。だからですから、診断にしてみたら、診断、お前は阿弥陀仏、あるいは釈尊、七合尊のご本を感謝しなければいけないんだと、診断。こういうふうに、診断承認、診断承認が言ってる言葉じゃなくてですね、診断承認が聞いてる言葉なんですね。そこはっきり、えー、理解しなきゃいけないと思うわけですけど。そういうわけで、その、この、この、音読さんの内容は、ご音放射っていうことですね。ご音、ご音、ご音を感じるということと、それと、放射っていうのは放射、感謝の気持ちで暮らすということで、放射の行って言いますけどね。放射行って言います。ですから、この、和さんの中には、二つのことが言われているわけですね。ご音を感じるっていうことですね。音読を感じるという。そして、放射の行をしなければいけない。放射の行ということが二つ言われているわけですね。ですから、この二つのことについてお話しさせていただきたいと思います。えー、まず、その、ご、ご音ですね。ご音、おわりは音読ですね。ご音を感じるということは、どういうことかということですね。それ、これお話しで後で、放射の行というのは、どういうことなんだっていうことをお話したいわけですけど、まず最初に、この、ご恩放射っていうことですけども、この、ご恩放射っていうことは、これは、えー、診断証人は、この、阿弥陀仏、釈尊、あるいは七高尊に対して、その教えの、教えの音読ですね、ご恩を感謝してるわけですね。そして、大事なことはですね、診断人は単にこの教えが素晴らしい、あ,ありがたい教えだって言って、それを感謝してるだけでなくてですね、このご恩を感じるということは、その教えが、教えとなるまでに、えー、この背景があるわけですね、えー。もっと具体的に言うと、お釈迦様とか七高僧が非常なご苦労をされたということですね。そのご苦労の結果、その、あその素晴らしい教えができたということですね。ですから、この、ここに、まあ、教えを、教えが作品だとしますと、この作品を単に素晴らしい、ありがたいと言って感謝するんじゃなくて、その背後にあって、普通では見えないものに対して思いを馳せるというんですかね。日本語では、忍ぶという言葉がありますね。その背景のご苦労ですね。ご苦労を忍ぶという、本当に私のためにこの教えを与えられたんだけど、その教えができるまでには大変皆さん、先人の方々がご苦労してくださったんで、そのご苦労を感じるときにですね、ああ、ありがたいってこのご恩を感じるんだと思いますね。ですから、この、その、教えの背景にある教えが教えとなるに至った
、そのご苦労ですね、これをに思いを発すということですね、忍ぶということが非常に大事な、業を感じるということの意味だと思いますね。まさにそれは私たちが普段使っている言葉、念仏ということと同じことですね。念仏というのは、この念仏の念というのは、過去のことを、昔に起きたことを、この忍ぶという意味なんですね、えー、ですから、念仏という言葉はその、もう一つの言葉の念ということです、それを詳しく言いますと、億年という言葉なんですね。えー、英語で言うと、remember とか、recollect っていう意味ですけど、これはそのあ過去にあったものをこう忍ぶと言いますかね、えー、このご苦労というかね、それを。思い起こすという、そういう意味の念仏っていうのは、単に今ここにあるものを思うってことじゃなくて、これがここにあるのは、どのような過程を経てですね、入っておいて、ここに至ったかっていう、その過去に思いを馳せるというのが、念仏の億年、三田部本願書いてる、億年っていう意味なんです。億っていうのは記憶の億っていうんですからね、念仏の念、億年っていうわけですね。で、ここでその一つ、あの、お話をしたいのは、昔僕を聞いたお話ですけども、えー、もう2、30年前に京都で聞いたお話ですけども、えー、大山住田さんという人がね、おられてですね、この人がお話した、高倉会館というところでお話したのを僕は聞いたんですけども、その時、この大山住田さんがね、えー、ある海波の激しい海,だ海,ら海,海岸に行ってですね、この小石を見つけたんだそうですね、えー、そして海岸でその石を見つけた波の荒い海岸そ,でそれを非常に見た時に思わずですね大山住田さんは大山住田さんっていうのは俳句を作る人ですけどもこの人はそれを見た時にすべすべなもんまるな石を見た時にね思わずああわしはまだ苦労が足らんなってこう言って口から出たんだそうですねこれを見てねああ、わしはまだ苦労が足らんなって思ったわけですね。何、何のことかちょっとわからないと思いますね。皆さんも、僕も最初わかんなかったですけども、親山さんが言われるには、私はこのまん丸なすべすべとした綺麗な石を見たときに、仏様のことを思った。そして、この石が、この石になるまで、すべすべとした丸い、まん丸い石になるために、いかにこの石が、苦しみ、苦難を経てきたかということを思った。そうですね。まん丸の石が、最初からまん丸の石じゃないですね。これは昔は、あこのギス、なんて言いますかね、ごつごつしたね、岩の一部だったわけですね。ごつごつした石が何百年、何千年、何万年を経てですね、波にあこう叩かれてですね、叩かれ、叩かれして、ついにこの、なんていうかね、その、ザラザラしたね、ゴツゴツした石が綺麗な石になった。だから、大山さんはね、これを見たときに、あ、お釈迦様、本当に苦労された人なんだって、これお釈迦様に見えたの、ね。あるいは、お釈迦様の素晴らしい教えに見えたわけですね。しかし、この素晴らしいお釈迦様のお姿、あるいはあ、素晴らしい教えは、その日にパッと吹き出たもんじゃなくて、背景ですね。大変な苦しみ、お釈迦様がいわゆる出家をされた時の苦しみ、あるいは苦行をされた時の苦しみ、人間としては最も苦しい苦しみを経てですね、そして五大樹芸の下でですね、ついに35歳の時にお悟りが開いたということは、この完成したわけですね、まん丸な石が誕生した。その背後には、普通には見えないけども、ご苦労があったんだなってことをこう思って。それを思ったときにですね、あ、自分はまだ苦労が足りないんだな。この石に照らされてですね、自分がいかにこのザラザラした、ゴツゴツした人間であるかっていう、それにまあ気づいたわけですね。ですから思わず、ああ、わしはまだ苦労が足りんな。お釈迦様の素晴らしいお姿なんだ。そしていかに大きな苦しみを経て、この姿になられたんだなってことを、まあ思ったわけですね。だから僕はこの話を聞いたときですね、あ,あ、どうを感じるっていうことはそういうことなんだ。そうだね。億年ですね。ねああ私のためにご苦労なさってくれたんだ。教えを
作るために、知恵を完成するためにご苦労されたそうだったんだっていうことですね。えーそう,そうですね。これ、こういうことは、私たちよくか感じることですね、えー。いろんな芸術ですね。バンゴッホの絵なんか見ても、私たちはね、あ、素晴らしい作品だなって、いろんな画家の絵があってね、中には、あ、綺麗な素晴らしい作品だなと思う。私たちは表面の、その作品の、そこに現れた表面しか見れないですね。しかし、そこにいかに、その作家がですね、画家が、あ大きな苦しみを得て、その苦しみの、結晶としてですね、涙と血の結晶として、こういうものがここに生まれたって、その過去を見れるということはないですね。ベートーベンにしてもそうですね、多くの人はベートーベンの作品を非常に喜んで聞いてですね、感動するわけですけれども、その中のね、多くの人は、なかなかその背後のベートーベンの苦しみっていうことはね、そこまで見れる人っていうのは、そんなにいないんじゃないかっていうことを思うわけですね。えー、そういうわけで、その、えー、今、この、ご恩放射ということをお話してるわけですけれども、ご恩を感じるっていうことはね、その、表面に見える教えとか、まあ、お釈迦様の素晴らしい姿ですね、その背後にいかに、あの、大変なご苦労があったかという、それを感じ取るということがですね、えー、先の億年ということですけれども、それを、それを感じるということが、あこの、ご恩を感じるということの意味なんじゃないかということを思いますね。そして、次にちょっと放射ということに、放射ということですけどね、ご恩放射の放射ということについてお話ししたいんですけども、この放射ということはですね、えー、こうな何かこう、こう何かご恩をに報いるために何かしなければいけないんだって、そういう思い、思いと言いますかね。そういう生活のことですね。放射の生活っていうのは、感謝の生活ということですね。なぜこの感謝の生活ということが私たちのせに実現するかというと、やはりこの今お話したご恩ということですね。深いご恩、ご苦労があって、そのご苦労によって素晴らしい私教えが私たちに与えられている。そしてその教えをいただくとですね、もうなんか感謝せずとは売れないっていう、それがまさに親鸞商人の、あこのあ、身を粉にしても頬ずべし、ね、骨を砕いても幸せる。これはものすごい表現ですね。もう体を粉にしても、体を、骨を砕いても感謝しなきゃいけない。これはしなきゃいけないっていうのは、せずと折れないっていうことですね。せずと折れなくなるっていうことですね。ですから、法音、法、法音読を感じるということは、ある意味で非常にこの静かな、受け身的なね、受け身的な、消極的なことですよね。ありがたいって中高の静かに思いを馳せるわけですけど。しかし、この法音ということは非常に静かな受け身な、受け身的なことですけども、それが私たちが本当に感動したときにですね、えー、せずとは折れないというダイナミックなんですね。受動,で受動的じゃなくて、その反対の能動的なですね、じっとしておりない、ご恩放射の生活をしなきゃいけないんだってこと、もちろんご恩放射の生活といっても何にも社会的な活動をするということじゃないですね、素晴らしい教えをどこまでもどこまでも聞かせていただくということですね、浄土真宗では、この放射の行、音読に報いる放射の行っていうのは、ただひたすらですね、えー、教えをいただくということですね。私たちの先人の方々すべてですね、診断書にみんな私たちに聞いてくれ、聞いてくれ。わた私もですね、診断書には私は先人のご恩を教えをに,に対して非常に深い感謝の思い、そしてその教えをありがたいと思う思いにつけてですね、それをどこまでもどこまでも聞かなきゃいけないという。そういう気持ちが出てきて、それが、こう、放射だっていうことを、診断書人は言われるわけですね。ですから、私たちは、診断証人の、この診断書人は、自分の先人に対してこのお言葉を言ってるわけですけれども、これを読むときは、私たちはですね、今度は、診断証人がいかに苦労された。診断証人の証言も、多難ですよね。えー、子供のときに両親に別れ、あるいは、念仏の迫害を受けてですね、
業,業に敗れ、そして念仏の迫害を受けてですね、越後に流されて、非常に貧しい苦しい生活をされたでしょう。それで生涯念仏の迫害にあってたわけですね。死んだ庶民の生活は決して優しいものではなかったと思いますね。ですから私たちが今、死んだ庶民の素晴らしい、このまん丸な、素晴らしい、あ死んだ庶民の素晴らしいお姿ですね。そ,れそういうものに接するわけです。単に教えがありがたい、素晴らしいと言って、この結果をですね、ただ褒めるんじゃなくて、この素晴らしい教えがどこから出てきた、診断書人のご苦労ですね、これを私たちが本当にこう思いを発すときにですね、やはり診断書人の願いですね、聞いてくれ、聞いてくれっていう願いを私たちは聞かざるといないわけですね。そして、広報者というのは、診断書人の教えをですね、どこまで。どこまでも聞いていかなきゃいけないんじゃないかということを、まあ、思うわけですね。なんか話がね、ちょっと舌足らずのお話になりましたけども、ともかく結論として言えることはですね、ご恩放射、ね、大の音読は身を粉にしても放ずべし、刺繍知識の音読の骨を砕きても放ずべし、この一つの和算のお心ですね、このお心が、ご恩ということと、放射ということをですね、私たちにいただけたら、それだけでもう私たちは浄土真宗の新人をいただけたということになるわけですね。これ以上に私たちに人生にとって尊いものはないんじゃないかと思いますね。難しいこということは、難しいことを受けるということは必要ないんですね。学問で難しいことは必要ない。大事なことは、このご恩を感じ、そしてその放射のように、えー、そしむということですね。これ以外に、行動心身というのはないんだと思うんですね。その救われた人の姿というのは、この、ご恩を感じ、放射の生活をするという、これに尽きるんじゃないかということを思うわけです。まあ、そういうわけで、えー、ありがたいご縁をいただきまして、皆さんに、このズームを通じてお話しするのは、これが初めてですけども、本当に、まあ、あこのご招待賜りましてありがたいことであったと思います。では皆さん、体にはくれぐれも気をつけるようにしてください。はい、それじゃあ、何万ダウン、何万ダウン、何万ダウン、何万ダウン、何万ダウン、何Okay,、uh, so we will close the service with a、uh, aisatsu from、uh, Rinban Kawawata and、uh, Ondoksan, as well as announcements. And、uh, if there are any questions、uh, for Dr. Haneda,、uh, you know, after the official end of the service,、uh, you can ask your questions. Or, you know, ask him now, and he'll answer the questions.、Uh, During our QA.、Uh, so, without further ado, I would like to welcome up、uh, Rinban Kawawata. ハナダ先生、ありがとうございました。いつも本当に深い、またあの皆さんにとっては分かりやすいお話をとってですね、私どもにとって分かりやすいお話をいただきました。うんあり本当にありがとうございました。
Uh, <coughs> on behalf of the Hinga Chongganch uh, Hawaii District and the uh, Hawaii uh, Basin, I would like to uh, express my sincere appreciation to those who attended this uh, uh, district and then uh, uh, Basin Hongko service. This Hongko uh, became very meaningful for all of us in Hawaii District. I would like to uh, express my sincere appreciation to uh, former uh, Abbot uh, Cho Ken Otani and present Abbot Cho Yu Otani and the future Abbot also that uh, overseas district, district Abbot uh, Yu Otani uh, for their, you know, uh, sending us their uh, greetings. Uh, thank you very much. And also that uh, I direct, uh, you know, uh, thanks to the, uh, uh, Dr. Nobuo Haneda for the phone call message. It was a so profound and then an inspired message for all of us. Uh, sensei, arigatou gozaimashita. Uh, mm, even though, uh, you know, under the, uh, this condition of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we are very fortunate uh, to observe that this Hong Kong service uh, with uh, Abbots and then also the uh, Dr. Haneda and the many, many members uh, of the Hawaii district. I sincerely express my appreciation to all of you who attended this uh, phone call service. Uh, this occasion, we make a uh, commitment to listen to the Shindan Shonen teaching more diligently and the share uh, our uh, deepest, you know, uh, wish to the, our community. Uh, through this uh, occasion, uh, occasion of the Hong Kong service, we all realize, uh, I mean, that's in a most uh, as, uh, as, I mean, that's in a aspiration is always, you know, uh, with us. Uh, so we must pass down, you know, this uh, torch over there, you know, the I mean, uh, aspiration to the future generation in this island. Uh, in closing, once again, I dearly express my thanks uh, to the all of you here this morning for the, this phone uh, call service. Thank you very much. So please stay safe and then uh, please take care uh, of yourself and then please stay safe. Thank you very much for your attendance. Arigato gozaimashita. Okay, we're very happy to share with you folks today an announcement about the uh, Honko and Succession services that will be taking place uh, in Japan. And even though you know we're not able to travel to Japan right now, uh, you can watch it on the Higashi Honganji Honzan's YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, we have details on this. It's going to be taking place on Friday, November 20th, but that's in Japan time. It'll actually be on the uh, 19th uh, for Hawaii time at 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, so it'll be about an hour and a half I think it was estimated but uh, this will be the ceremony for uh, the changeover of uh, abbots and uh, we will have that on the YouTube channel we're going to try to have it embedded on the Higashi Honganji website uh, so you'll be able to watch it, uh, you know, right on the Hawaii Betsuin page. Uh, in addition, the week after that, the uh, the 21st through the 28th is the uh, Honko week over at our headquarters temple in Japan. And so, you know, many of these uh, have not been broadcast before for Japanese speaking folks. They have lectures uh, about Shin Buddhism that will be taking place throughout the week. And uh, they will also be showing the uh, bandobushi and other special chanting. So if you want to see what is on the schedule for the live stream uh, on the uh, Hawaii Betsuin page, and you know we sent it out with the newsletter too, uh, we have a link to our uh, Higashi Honganji Kyoto Honko Memorial 
live stream information. And we'll have that on the front page as well. Uh, so yeah, please join us for that on the 19th. Coming up this week, we have our uh, ukulele band practice on Tuesday at 3 p.m. and the larger sutra study class in English uh, at 6 p.m. And next week, we have our regular Sunday service at 10 a.m. Uh, I'll be giving the Dharma message for that. Okay. Uh, are there any other announcements? All right. Uh, so we will close today's uh, Honko service with the singing of Ondoksan, uh, which you can find on page uh, 112 in your service books. Okay, with that, we will conclude our Hongkou service for the Betsuin and District. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, if you are uh, watching right now, you can stay tuned for the question and answer if we have some questions for Sensei. Okay, thank you very much and have a very nice day.
And uh, absolutely. <laughs> Sensei, take care, and you have a very nice day. And for all of you watching, thank you so much for coming.